sing, and you know we mix a little hymn and a little contemporary worship songs and uh, still manage to do all the songs we should do. We're going to sing a, a, a one we may not have sung for a while, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. It says, what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus. good? God is good? And all the time? Good. We're, we are glad that you are here this morning, and I cannot tell you what a day this has been that the Lord has blessed. I don't know about you guys, but God has been speaking to me ever since I woke up, and it's just been miracle after miracle after miracle, and I know that he is in charge. So you're here for a purpose, and I am here for a purpose, and you guys are here for a purpose. Say, church family, say good morning to our visitors here online. Good morning. Good morning. We're glad you're here, and we're glad that you've come to worship and to study God's Word. Before we start, we have an announcement that we would like to give to you, and if Linda, you would come up. Whichever one you're comfortable with. <laughs> Good morning. Um, we always, every year, um, do a Charles Jones Memorial uh, offering. Usually we do that in, in July. And this last July, it, it passed. <laughs> so then we're going to start that today. We're going to extend it over into a couple of weeks into September. I know September is the California missions offering. So what we'll have to do, we may have to extend that over a couple of more weeks. But some of you, I don't know if uh, you know what the Charles Jones mission offering is about. Charles Jones was a son of uh, one of our beloved um, members, Ray Jones, and the son of Ernestine Jones. And this offering is in memorial for him. Uh, it most of it's all of it usually is goes to support a school, a Christian school in Cambodia. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Cameroon. Uh, Dr. Awa uh, is the founder of that school, and I think some of you have met him. He has been here before uh, speaking to you, and he is a dear friend of ours. Um, so I would like to today. Uh, 
please, please prayerfully think about making a contribution to the Charles Jones Memorial offering that supports, helps support the school in Cameroon. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's a great cause, and um, we've had the doctor here and reports from Jim of um, how it really helps the school out. A, a little bit goes a long way. Uh, let's continue to worship, Greg. Mighty to save, Jesus is. Let's sing it. setting familiar to him. Oh. 
Wow, I don't know about you, but I'm excited, amen? I mean, we are here to worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we want to welcome you, and we're going to start out by reading a Bible verse here. What are you filling yourself with? John 4, 13 through 14. A young woman was in Samaria who was getting coming by the well, and Jesus was there. And uh, Jesus said to her, as she asked him, what do you want? And he said, some water. And she said, how are you going to pull it up? You've got nothing to pull it up. So Jesus answered to her, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will be in him and will be a water, a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Jess, would you mind, Jess? Jess, do you mind saying the opening prayer, please? Saying the opening prayer. Do you mind saying the opening prayer? Okay, guys, here's the deal. I had a really nice sermon all prepared. Ta-da, 23 pages. I was gonna order pizza because we were gonna be here till about 3 p.m. Then this morning, as I am doing my Bible study, the Lord spoke to me. And would you guys mind, this is what God put on my heart. It started out something like this. The word of the Lord came to me. Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. Has a nation ever changed its gods? Yet they are not gods at all. But my people have exchanged their glory for worthless idols. Be appalled at this, O heavens, and shudder with great horror, declares the Lord. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Is Israel a servant, a slave by birth? Why then has he become plunder? Lions have roared, they have growled at him, they have laid waste his land, his towns are burned and deserted. Also the men of Memphis and Tophanes have shaved the crown of your head. Have you not brought this on yourselves by forsaking the Lord your God when he led you in the way? Now why go to Egypt to drink water from the Shehor? And why go to Assyria to drink water from the river? Your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuke you. Consider then and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord your God and have no awe of me, de declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Thanks, guys. That's the word that the Lord gave to me this morning. I, I knew who it was from, just like I'm sitting here talking with Jess. Thank you for doing that opening prayer. I knew it was from the Lord. He said, this is what I want you to preach about this morning. I said, okay, I'm, here I am, I'm a tool. Use me any way you want. And then I got to thinking, well, what about the sermon? He said, forget about the sermon. I will give you the words. Okay? Now remember, this isn't from me, this is from the Lord. I'm putting my trust in him. And I am confident that God's word doesn't come back void and that he is going to have me talk to you with everything that he wants you to know coming from him so he gets the glory. Amen? 
So if you guys aren't thinking I'm shaking up here, okay? I've stood in front of thousands of people before. But I'll tell you what, guys. Right now, I'm shaking inside. And I'm putting all my trust in the Lord. A hundred percent. And um, so with that, knowing that the Lord's in charge, as Mike and I were walking this morning, you know what's funny? After I said that, God said, go walk. Because I was ready to do my final check up on the sermon and everything. He said, go walk. I said, go walk. Okay, Mike's in the next room sleeping. I gotta wake him up. Mike walked through the door. Right, Mike? Mike walked through the door. And I went and walked because I trust in the Lord. So here we go, gang. This will be a good ride because when I read those words about the water and drinking and what his people did and everything, I'm like, holy cow. And Pastor Danny, I know you guys are on vacation. I know you're watching right now. This is a result of him challenging us to read our Bible every day. Amen? So the question now becomes, as it says here, what are you filling yourself with? Right? Because Jesus, with the woman at the well here, when she came up, she was rather flippant when she first asked him. Living water? Now, this young lady was well-known throughout the village, and I mean well-known. Okay? She definitely knew how to deal with men. And she was very flippant in that question. And I can't wait till I get to heaven because I am sure that God is going to have the video of this scene playing. So we, or whatever we're going to call it then, there, we're going to play it. And we're going to see exactly, you know, I'm curious, how exactly did she ask him? Was it curious? Lord, how are you going to do it? Or Lord, <laughs> how are you going to do it? You don't have anything to draw from. But what was Jesus telling her? I am the living water, right? I, if you take of me, you will spew out everlasting life. I am the living water. Clean, clear, the sustainer of life that you need to survive. You can't do it. You can't live without water for any amount of time, right? So when each of you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God makes a promise. He seals it with the promise. He sends the Holy Spirit to live within you. Amen? Each and every one of you who have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you profess that. You came forward because everybody who Jesus called, he called publicly. Because God said, if you confess me publicly, I will confess you before my Father. If you deny me, I will deny me before my Father. And that's very important. Because he was up on the cross publicly. And he took all the sins of the world and he drank that cup of wrath. Amen? So here we are in church today with Jesus in our heart, right? And this morning Jim said, hey, how you doing? I'm doing good, right? And I told him, I said, you know, I said, young man went up to Jesus and said, good master, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus said, you call me good, yet there is none good except God and Jim. Didn't say that, right? So, when I'm at the cash register, the cash register, as I do with Jim, I say, you know, in order for you to say you're good, you have to have Jesus in your heart. And it's amazing the looks I get from all the cashiers and the people I tell this to because they'll go, I have Jesus in my heart. And then they have the biggest smile on their face where they had frowns before. Amen? That's what we're talking about. It's only that goodness because Jesus took that cup of wrath. But what happens to this cup? What happens to this clear water? What happens to us during the day? Because you're here now and everything's great. I mean, some of you guys came to be entertained. Some people came to worship. Some people were dragged down here. Some people do it out of obligation. Why did you come here? My life changed when I decided I was coming here to worship. I am here to worship the living, the true God who created the universe. And all those monkeys in school who told me that we are from monkeys, they can be monkeys if they want to, but I was created by the creator of the universe, the maker of the universe, who told the prophet, I knew you before I created you in your mother's womb. That's the God that I serve. That's the God that I'm here today to worship. Are you here for that purpose? Amen, right? Didn't sound very enthusiastic here. Come on, I'm used to dealing with Marines. All right? So you've got to raise the bar here, all right? So what happens? Well, sometimes we come to church and we are really upset at our wife. Or we are really upset with our husband. 
Sometimes we come here and we've got problems. Oh, COVID, big scary monster. I'm going to make you sick. I'm going to kill you. Fine. You're not going to kill me. When God decides it's my time to go, I'm ready. But as long as I'm here serving the Lord, I'm going to take everybody who I can to heaven with me. And that's my mission. And when God is ready with me, God will send me. I don't care if it's what you call it, but if you come here and you hear Victor Turris died, rumors of my death or grat are greatly exaggerated. I am more alive than ever because I'm in heaven where I want to be with my Lord serving him. Amen? Amen. Isn't that where we want to be? Everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. You ever notice that? We want to hang around here. I mean, really? I mean, what's Bob saying right now? Bob's saying, Beverly, oh, this place is like incredible, like nothing you've ever seen. There was this girl who was blind, okay? And her mom tried to explain to her the world, about the world, about the things going on in the world. And they went and operated her on her, and they put blinders over her, and three days later she could see. And she saw the doctor's face. And she looked and around, and she saw the room, and the window was open, and she saw the green outside, and then she turned and she saw her mother's face for the first time. And she said, Mom, why didn't you tell me just how incredible this place is? It's like, I can see, it's, it's just absolutely incredible. You never told me it was like this. Well, dear, we tried the best I could. And here you have John writing, a first century man, about a place that he's at, trying to explain it to us. And how can you explain it to us? Be because it's beyond anything that we've ever seen. Amen? It is the most spectacular place that you could ever be. There's no fermentation, so guess what? I can leave my ice cream there all day long and it's not gonna move. It's not gonna melt, it's not gonna freeze, it's gonna be perfect. I can leave that pie there with the berries on top of it, unlike the berries here that rot after a few days, and it's not going anywhere because there's no fermentation in heaven, amen? So, what happens to us when we come here and we're upset at our spouse? What does God say? God's word says, you go make that right. And then you come back and worship me. But oh no, we know better. I better not spill this on here because my wife is not going to be happy. And she is watching. Hi, dear. Okay. So what happens? Here you go, some nice vinegar, right, in the water. Can you tell the difference? Anybody want to drink this? No volunteers. Hmm. That's what happens when we come to church, right? When we decide we're going to gossip about our neighbors. Oh, you Christians, you're a bunch of hypocrites. Hey, we're at church, right? Not a problem. I go there Sunday morning, right? All those things that we do to people, and people tell us, right? People know, hey, wait, aren't you a Christian? Right? You're not supposed to be doing that stuff. Hmm. They know better than we do, don't they? But yet when we come to church, here we are. Nobody wants to drink this stuff, right? Hmm. But then there's some other stuff that goes on where we do things to hurt the Holy Spirit. Remember, we are all born again, right? And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are made anew, correct? Some of you guys aren't sure, right? That's why in uh, Malachi, or Malachi, for us Italians, 3.6 says, For I, the Lord God, do not change. And it gets further expanded in the New Testament where it said, For I, the Lord God, do not change on the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So we can depend on his promises. Amen? Okay. But what happens sometimes is all of a sudden, we're going to smorgasbord the Bible. After all, I'm not in church, so who's going to know? 
Well, God knows. Is there anything you can hide from God? Mm, is that a multiple choice question? Is there anything you can hide from God? No, but some of you guys think I think you can. I was amazed one day I was sitting it's in the old sanctuary and we had a pastor, visiting pastor, giving a sermon. And at the end of the sermon, he did an altar call and one of our deacons went forward. Guys, I was 24 years old, 24 years old, and this guy was like a pillar of the church. He's a deacon, wow, you know, I mean, he's like, oh. I mean, are you kidding me? And he went forward? And he said, I'd never really accepted Christ in my heart. I went through the motions, but I never really committed myself to him. So any one of us have, have got those moments to where we have a God who we have back here on the shelf and we call him out when we need him and then we have the audacity to tell him what we want him to do. Look at what it said here in Jeremiah 2. You have no fear of God. Hey, look, guys, this morning when I read that, right? The word of the Lord came to me. Go proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. The word of the Lord came to me. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Did you know that? And if you're not in fear of the Lord... You need to get priorities straightened out. So here is God, right, Jesus. He went to the cross. He took all of your sins and mine that are hidden right now, right? And he made you holy. He made you clear. He made you clean before God. He made you as white as snow. Amen? He did this. Everything, every sin, past, present, and future, because we are still living in these bodies. Amen? Anybody want to go to heaven with these bodies? I don't see any hands. Hmm. It's not a trick question. No. Why? Because then it wouldn't be paradise. God has something so phenomenally better that when your eyes are open and you see where you're at, you are going to say, wow, this is beyond anything I could have ever imagined. But do you believe in God's word? Do you believe that you will be reborn again up there? Do you believe you have a body that will last an eternity? Do you believe that there will be paradise? Do you believe that you will be happy with the Lord? Amen? So what are we going to do up there? We're going to worship, right? I went to a concert. I, I don't know. We, you know. we get these tickets to the Orange County Fairgrounds. And I forgot who was playing. The crowd, which was packed, stood the entire concert, the entire three hours. They stood. I'm like, wow, these guys are pretty motivated. I mean, you know, these, nah. you know, I mean, they're okay, but, you know, standing, right? Three hours. You know what 12 men did to the world? These guys were motivated. I'm going to party with these guys, right? I mean, we played up here before, and we were at the night down at Camp Pendleton where those Marines were singing the days of Elijah. I mean, 18, 19 year old boys, young men, excuse me, on their feet singing days of Elijah and these guys were just unbelievable. And if you want to get motivated, watch that for a few minutes. And I'm like, I want to party with those guys. And I was talking with one of the uh, drill instructors and I said, uh, do they do this when they go back down to MCRD, back down to the drill field? He said, oh, they do that the first week they're here. I got to thinking, that's the best recruiting tool for the United States Marine Corps I could ever think of. Watching these, and look at how many times it's been viewed. I mean, hey, if I'm a Christian and I got any doubt, I want to party with these guys. Amen? And I'm thinking at Doyle Braden's funeral that we went to a couple months ago. It was filled. I mean, it was like almost going to heaven. You know, I'm like, wow, this is what heaven's going to be like. Oh, there's so-and-so, and there's so-and-so, and there's so-and-so, and there's so-and-so. Wow, you know, these guys are like all the pillars of society in Orange County and Sacramento and around. 
And we stood up and sang every single song. And I'm like, wow, this is, this is like heaven. I mean, I know it's not even close, Lord, forgive me, but, you know, this is great. And I never could understand why we, don't, we are not excited like that every single time. And why we're only excited every now and then. Guys, you've got the cure for cancer. You've got the cure for polio. You've got the cure for COVID. You've got the cure for eternal life. So why aren't we shouting it to everybody we know? Amen? You guys don't sound convinced. Oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. It's a pastor job. Okay, I get it. I'm not going to let you slide with that one. Come on, guys. So here we go again. All right? Excuse me. Back with the clear water. So we're back with the clear water. But there's some things in our life. Where's my assistant? Did you get it yet? Cool. All right, we're set. But there's some things in our life that we like to drink. Nobody's looking. Behind every good officer is a staff NCO shaking his head. So we're going to have a good one here. After all, nobody's looking. I mean, you know, it's only beer. I mean, it's not going to hurt anybody, right? Wow, let me see. What does the Bible say about that? Hmm, the Bible talks about, it says that wine is a mocker, beer is a brawler, whoever is led astray is not wise. When the queen was giving her son some instructions, she said, dear, I'm paraphrasing here, remember, God speak me through me, okay? Let, let the people drink and sulk in their misery and their despair, but you as the king must have a clear mind. You cannot let yourself go down that path, okay? I can remember one time in a deacon's meeting, we had to talk about this. And one of them said, well, if you believe Jesus turned water into wine, didn't you? I said, he most absolutely did. He most certainly did. Matter of fact, the guest said, it was the best wine I've ever tasted. I've never tasted anything like this. Well, I hope to God he's never tasted anything like that because it was made from the Son of God. You're telling me that Jesus is going to make something that's fermented, that's got alcohol in it, that's going to make him do something stupid and let this, another spirit take control of him? Heck no. Even he said it. Well, well usually you know, most people save the best for last, but you brought, or save the best for first and then bring out the cheaper stuff, but you brought it out first. Every single thesaurus, every single commentary that I wrote on the subject, and I got to be quite an expert about this stuff, I, did, I really didn't want to go down this path, has said that there's different words, different meanings, for that word, and it could mean grape for wine, it could mean grape, it could mean a whole litany of it. And I've yet to find one except one Theosaurus that says, oh, it's okay for you to drink. Every other one, every other paper written by PhDs, people with doctorates and all that other stuff says no. Why? Because when you go into the store, your chief accuser, Satan, is going to say, look what this knucklehead Vic did. He thought it was in his trash can, but his next door neighbor who was walking by saw a whole can full of beer or wine or whatever. And that would break my heart. 
I mean, Satan's going to be your chief accuser. And what does he do in the store? What does he do in the stores? Food, wine, and what? Spirits. Do not be full of other spirits, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when we put that stuff in here, what are we mixing it with? Your body isn't yours anymore. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, guys, I got news for you. In case you haven't heard the good news, your body was paid for the blood by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? It sounds like I'm telling you guys this for the first time. Jesus Christ paid the price so that you could be free. And what do we do? We take that pure, clean water and we pollute it. Right? I mean, I had a, I had a warrant officer who went to this church who kept saying, he kept, he kept at me. Well, Vic, isn't it okay to drink? Isn't it okay? Isn't it okay? We went back and forth. And I said, hey, I'm not going to say his name. Maybe I'm missing something here. Maybe you can show me a verse in the Bible where it says it's okay. Well, you know, we're not talking about the Bible. Oh, well, I am. And I, and the best thing I could do for him was to pray for him. To continue to pray for him because it's only God's spirit that's going to convict him and make him right with God because he's accountable. So after that, oh, by the way, Marlon, anybody want to finish this off? First time you can say you drank beer in church. No? Let me see if I can entice you guys. World's best beer. Marlon, hold on. You might want this. Don't go away. One of these other guys want it. One scoop or two. Root beer. Oh, you guys didn't really think this was beer, did you? Huh? Come on. Thank you. One scoop or two? Two? Just one? See you later. God's in charge because I am shaking up here, okay? So to continue on, what else do we what else do we add to this? Hmm. Well, when we say little words that are that your mom would give you hot sauce or wash your mouth out, right? So what do we do? said see because we had a we had a cleanup thing over here and people cleaned and shined and polished so okay so you know when we decide that we're going to say some swear words boy this is thick stuff well there it goes boy when it comes out it comes out this is what we do to our bodies, do we not? This is what you look like, and yet you're in church. I'm in church. Are we not? Don't do things that will sadden the Holy Spirit. And what do we do? I mean, I remember when I was in the Marine Corps, I had accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm all sitting over here at the base, and somebody came in, and I don't know, something happened, and I just used a few choice words. And Mike Klebick was sitting right across from me. And he said, Vic, 
You're a Christian, aren't you? What kind of stupid question is that? Well, yeah, I am. Hey, dude, you don't need to use those words anymore. You're free from that. Right? You're free. Amen? Do you know what that means? Because was I doing what it said in Galatian, the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, happiness? Was I displaying that when I was saying those words? Huh? You're free. You don't have to talk like that anymore. We had another deacon from the church here. One day, you know, I went out to see him. And I, you know, I went into a shop. And all of a sudden, he's there just, I'm like, worse than a sailor. Talking to his man. And I was saying, okay, Vic, you know, you, you were there too, buddy. And I remembered the words that Mike Clevett told me. Aren't you glad when you surround yourself with other Christians? Aren't you glad that you have brothers who love you and gently bring you back to the Lord? Amen? Aren't you glad that the Lord loves you so much that he has sent people to minister to you? Amen? So when you say those words... Is that taking you to God or is that taking you away from God? What's it doing? A or B? Get a vote? How many say it's taking you away from God? Group participation. Need to see a few more hands here. All right, there we go. Right? That's a warning. That's a signal. But you've got to be in God's word in order for you to know that. If you don't know that, if you're not surrounded with Christian friends and you go down and just party with the rest of the boys and do all the things that they do, right? They're going to bring you down that road. Are you going to change and bring them to church? Are you kidding me? Right? Hey, you're a Christian and you're doing that stuff? Are you kidding? Can the words hypocrite mean anything here? Amen? So what are we going to do? How do we take that? How do we fix that? Well, you can't. Just like I couldn't this morning. That whole sermon just went down the tubes. But this sermon's much better and this sermon's much more important because this is coming from the willing God who said he would give me the words to say and I believed him. So how do we fix that? We fix that when you follow the word of God. We fix that when you become obedient to God. We fix that in the morning when you say, first thing I'm going to do, and you make a commitment to yourself. And you say, the first thing I'm going to do when I get up in the morning is thank the Lord. The next thing you're going to do in the morning, right? Well, it's what I do anyway. Read the Bible. Are you guys seeing anything different? It's clearing up. Amen? But it's only clearing up because I'm filling it with God's word. I'm filling it with prayer, which should be the foundation of our lives. We should have a direct line. We have a direct line with God, guys. He said, turn all your worries over to me, didn't he? But like I tell people, hey, why pray when you can worry? That's much easier, right? So what else do we do, right? When we start sharing God's word. The Bible says when you bring a brother who's gone down the wrong path and you bring him back to the Lord, that's a good thing. Store up your treasures in heaven. And some of you guys are going to have mansions like you cannot imagine because you have carried the words, Lord, and you have been obedient to them. So here we go. Getting better, isn't it? Right? You know... I, I have had a couple people this week who shared that they're really having problems with people. And I said, well, you should forgive them. 
like God's forgiven us. Amen? Um, when you pray for them, when you share God's word for them, when you forgive them, the Bible says be kind to them because when they realize what they have done wrong, it will be like pouring coal over their head. Amen? And there you have it. Your cup is clean. Your cup is holy. But it's only through the blood of Jesus Christ. And then you can, then you can stop and you can drink of the water that God promises you. That if you follow me, that if you call upon my name, I will give you eternal water that will spring from you. Did you notice what that says? You will be like an eternal fountain. So that you can be running over with blessings for people. Because I'll tell you, if you're not talking with your grandkids, if you're not talking with your kids, if you're not talking with your spouse, right? Um, I used to teach a young marriage class here, and we had uh, 28, 28 people in a young marriage class. Guys would come up to me all the time. My wife doesn't say she loves me. Mm -hmm. When's the last time you told her you, you, you loved her? Well, I married her, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, you sure did. Why'd she ever marry you? Not me. She's certainly married down. Right? Well, the Bible says we're to encourage them, for they are the weaker vessel. That's not a knock. It says husbands love your wives. It doesn't say wives love your husbands, because they've already got that gene in them. Their desires are for their husband. And when they come up and say, do you like my hair? They're just not doing small talk. They did it for you, knucklehead. Because she wants to please you. Because the Bible says you are to submit to your husband. And I don't really like that word. I think a better word in the Greek is reflect. And if you are reflecting the love to your wife that Jesus reflects to you, then she is going to reflect that love back. What a concept. But if you're not reading the Bible, you're not going to know that. My life changed when I said, what can I, how can I serve Hilda better? and make her a better Christian. Wow, I took the focus off of me. It's not about me. Wow, look at that. Guys, and this worked out much better ever since. Amen? Amen? Amen. And that's what we need to do, right? We need to be known for others, to others, by our... Come on, it's a smart group. We need, others need to know us. They'll know us by our what? L. Love, right? Because God loves everyone, right? I love everyone. But I got to tell you, there's some of your people who just really annoy me. Hey, I'm working on it. Amen? Don't you feel like that sometimes? Right? So now that you have that fresh cup of eternal life, that fresh cup of water, right? Sauce in there, but that's okay. That's because I'm really sensitive to it, but that's okay. But that's what God does for us, amen. So today, if you don't know that joy, if you don't know the thrill that we have of serving a living God, um we were at Sizzler yesterday, and these two ladies were there, and they were both Muslim. And um, we talked a little bit of small talk, and she said, well, I pray to my God for peace. <sighs> Which God are you praying to? Are you praying to the living God, to the true God, the creator of the universe? Or are you praying to the God who you people say Jesus was a nice guy, he was a nice prophet, but he wasn't God? And what I wanted to do was go down the next step. If you died today, what would happen to you? But, you know, 
So I did the next best thing. Dear Lord, I just pray that your spirit will touch these two in such a way that they will come to know the true and living God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Right? I trust more what God's going to do in their lives now. And I'm looking forward to, I don't know, maybe we'll run into a, maybe they'll come walking in here one day and say, hey, you know what? God put it on my heart to come in here. But they wouldn't have gotten that had we not conversed. They wouldn't have had that if my heart wasn't open, the rather just saying, just stalking them for who they are, I turned, kept the clean water, and prayed for them, and I trust that God's Spirit will touch their hearts in such a way that I, my prayer is, whether, whether I see them here or in heaven, they're going to come up and say, you might not remember me, but remember that prayer you said? That changed my life. That's what we're talking about here, guys, the power of God. But you have to open it up. You have to want that in your heart. You have to love people like Jesus loves people, like we're instructed to do. Amen? So if you don't know that God, and you want to know him, right? Romans 10, 8. Believe in your heart, because it's with a true heart that we confess Jesus is Lord. Right? Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth, because it's from the mouth that we confess, which comes from our heart. And it says, you might be saved. Wait, wait, how's that going? You could be saved. Doesn't sound right. You will be saved. Amen? And everyone who Jesus called, he called publicly to come forward. Because Jesus said, if I'm going to die up on that cross publicly for you, for your sins, then can we do no less than to come forward? When Jesus started his public ministry, right? John the Baptist, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Right? Why are you here? I'm here to get baptized. Whoa! I'm paraphrasing, okay? Me? A nothing? <sighs> Whoa! The Lamb of God! You are, are you kidding? I must do this in fulfillment and in obedience to my Father's words. And we know that after Jesus was baptized and he rose, the Holy Spirit descended on him in the form of a dove, and a voice from heaven said, This is my Son with whom I am well pleased. Why not be one of those people who God says to you, I am well pleased. So if everybody will bow their heads, everybody bow your heads, if you want that and you desire that, and you're sincere in your heart, just say this prayer. Dear Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner. And I'm sorry for my sins. And in the best way I know how, I come to you and ask for forgiveness. I ask that you come into my heart and be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. And God's people said, amen. Now, if you said that and you meant it with a heart, sincere heart, then you're what we call born again. And Jesus will now send the Holy Spirit to live within you. He will send that glass of water, that fresh glass of water that eternal life, that life-giving water. And if you did that, you can come forward and let us know so we can congratulate and we can worship and praise the Lord together with you. And if you did it online, we'd love to pray for you, come alongside of you and just congratulate you and uh, share in the blessings. But that's how easy it is, gang. That's how easy it is. You don't need to make yourself perfect for God. You don't need to make your do anything but to check like I can tell you stories about that otherwise it would be a free gift amen and that's what God wants a free gift that's given to you so what do you think you think that God uh, did a good job using the tool here amen and that's what every one of you can do Every one of you have the capability to do that. But God's word, you need to be obedient to it and listen to it. And I, I pray that this was a blessing to you this morning. It certainly was for me. And I'm not shaking now because I know that God had me the whole entire time. But more importantly, I know you, a lot of you guys were praying for me too. So let's close in a word of prayer, okay? Greg, would you like to come up and close us? If you like the sermon, my name is Vic Paturis. If you didn't like it, it's Pastor Danny. And he will be back next week, and I can't wait to see him again at work. Great. 
Let's pray, shall we? Father God, we're grateful that we could be in your house today. We're grateful that the Word of God always has truths that can enrich and improve our lives. We thank you, Lord, for salvation and all that that means to be offered to us. And pray for those who may be here this morning that are lost but have heard the Word of God and pray that that would just bubble up in their hearts throughout this week. We pray it in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Have a good week, folks.